Yeah, practice makes perfect, Carlos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How you been? Uh, I've been, I've been working my ass off. <laughs> the first, as a matter of fact, for the first time in my life, my PayPal balance is over a thousand bucks. Oh, right on, right on, right on. Congratulations, right and on. That, that all happened last week. <laughs> oh, right on. That means uh, you're adding value. That's what it means. You're adding value to. So yeah, well, I I just I just cut a pretty good deal this morning. I'm glad, I'm glad uh, to hear. Affiliate uh, offer for a brand new um, uh, sports uh, performance improving insole that uh, big name golfers and whatnot are hey. using, and tennis players and whatnot. Hello, Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. How's hey. it going? Good, good. Oh man, let me let me mute this for a second because uh, I'm not sure if I'm. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Mike has this spiffy little thing on. I didn't upload my little image. <laughs> yeah, that was the uh, uh, free generator. Thing. Right on. Yeah, yeah. The the the, the Magic's uh, beta thing that Bertrand uh, came out with, or is it something else? Yeah, that's uh, the guy. Um, the one that you gave us, Carlos. Yeah. That's the one he used. Oh no, it wasn't. It wasn't me. It was. Uh, oh, Don. Yeah. Yeah. Don. Yeah. Yeah. Is my uh, is is my uh, lower third read correctly? Yep. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, okay. do you mean, do we see it the right way, or is it... Yeah, I, just, I wanted to make sure it wasn't reversed. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of, you know, that, that's something that's a little, you know, that's one of those things that, you know, you know I know it's an app, right? It's a third-party app, so... Uh, but why does it show up mirrored, I wonder? I mean, maybe somebody, you know, I know you're very technical, Mike, so I thought maybe I'd ask. It's mirror image. <laughs> I don't know. Right, it's, just, it's just a goofy thing. I keep pointing up this way, and it's... You know that goes that way, but it's really over on the other side, and it's just like uh, <laughs> it, you'll you'll look for the box. It's one of <laughs> down here, maybe I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Okay. Well, I thought I. Uh, I oh God, my thing. office is such a mess, isn't it? Oh my God, you guys are yeah. looking into my office here. <laughs> yeah, turn it's turn crazy. your computer up so we just see your face <laughs> in the window. <laughs> There we go. So we just see, we see, we just see your eyebrows, just like you know. <laughs> I mean, let me close my whole room off. Oh, geez. Who's, a, who's that mask man? <laughs> All right, guys. So I thought I'd uh, I, I put this together because you know, first off, I, you know, I, I I love the concept of Google Plus. I think it's got a lot of promise. I've actually been messing around with it for some of my uh, offline clients, also to see if it's valuable to use for some other uses that I've seen. Some of the people that are, are using. That, that, you know, other mentors that I that I see using it uh, that are actually actively using it on social media uh, engagement, uh, some way, some some form. If you guys aren't familiar with Chris Lang, uh, you may want to write that down somewhere. Um, I, I think he uses it in a real ninja way that I you know that I'm attempting to use it right now for my offline clients, which I think is pretty smart. He uh, he embeds the video in his squeeze pages to get people to opt in. And he makes the replays only available for people that have opted in and or, or part of his membership, you know. So, uh, now how do you do that? Do you set that to private when it goes into YouTube? Is that how he does that? Yeah, what he, yeah. All he does is uh, he he actually doesn't allow it to even play on YouTube. Uh, he 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 uh, immediately downloads it. You know, hopefully I can get him on one of these calls. He immediately downloads the thing. You know, downloads it after it's been rendered. Uh, and then he uploads it to Google Docs, which is pretty smart. Oh, clever! Yeah, and then he uh, and then he then he locks it away, you know, using some you know, one of his membership platforms. And a lot of the stuff that he gives away, which I'm using for meetups, and I hope to you know just spill the beans here and just give some great ideas, and then get into some specifics. But uh, you know, for offline client seminars, you know, that would be a good idea for say. You know, I'm, this is not something that I've tested. I'm just going to test this out. So I haven't done this yet. But uh, with meetups, a lot of the problems that I see locally, because it's kind of the same concept here. I'm sorry, I'm bouncing around a little bit. I know my ADD kicks in. Uh, but uh, with meetup groups, a lot of the problems that I see around here, a lot of people hosting them, 
that they don't do uh, they, they don't they don't tend to thrive unless there's you know some sort of continuity built into it. So a lot of the people hold their meetups and they and they hold these meetings for about a month. They'll they'll stay viable, but they don't take it anywhere else. They don't usually charge for anything, you know. So these things tend to fizz, that fizzle out. I think, you know. Our meetup um, program for WordPress has been going on for over a year. We did try to do streaming of it, but I uh, we recently just started doing a hangout because one of our speakers was out of town, and so we ended up. Uh, having him do it, and so everybody was all excited um, to look at this new technology. And actually, a couple of other geeks in my town and I, we're going to do a meetup here and talk about how we can leverage this for more of our meetups in the future. So I think do it's you definitely for the meetup for the WordPress yeah. one. No, we don't. Well, in one sense, we do because almost everybody that's in the meetup itself has come to our classes. My girlfriend and I run the meetups, and she teaches an introductory WordPress class, and I teach the marketing section, advanced section of the class. So technically, all those people have paid us because they've taken our classes. So well, there you go. So wait, uh, let me ask just for clarification. So basically, they come to the meetup. And then they usually from there they, they they get to know and like and trust you, and then they go to your, your paid class. Is that, is that? It's actually the other way around. They normally sign. We do our classes through the adult uh, learning, learning center here in town, mm -hmm. and so then when they take the class, then we invite them to the meetup from the class because nine times out of ten, they don't know anything about it because they've only just started learning learning WordPress, so they've not even looked up anything about WordPress. So from there, then they become members of the meetup and then they see the value in the meetup and sharing themes and sharing plugins talking about security issues and so then they continue on and it's actually grown quite a bit we've actually moved we've opened a WordPress meetup in a whole nother city so it's actually doing well yeah it's a cross promotion then yeah definitely mm -hmm. um, so yeah no, that, that's you know that serves its purpose though then you know that's what I mean but a lot of the ones for for like networking events and or a lot of the networking ones over here, anyway, in the Silicon Valley, you know, unless you're part of, uh, you know, Startup Valley, Startup something or other over here, they tend to fizzle out. You know, these self-help ones and these motivational ones, they just tend to just, you know, uh, and I was like, you know, why, you know, uh, because there's there's no, the, the, the sticky factor is not there. There's nothing to keep them kind of like, you know, fence them in, you know. And they haven't so worked any like, monetization into their model either, it sounds like. Right. Exactly. Well, exactly, yeah. Yeah, because I end up picking up clients all the time from people, you know, so I think that there is an opportunity yeah, but, depending but on how you set it up. Though. But you have a paid platform, though. You have a paid platform, is what I was saying. That's and important. Also these, that's a critical part. Yeah, these are also small business owners that are trying to do their websites themselves. So once I sh we show them, you know, really there's lots of other options to do it. Maybe I can help you. And then they go, oh, can can I exactly. have a consultation with you, please? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and and that, you know, by showing them that you know what the hell you're talking about, you usually can, you know, uh, you know, just by giving it away, which is kind of the the premise of this uh, thing here. You're you're by giving them the information. You're showing that you're the you're the, the go-to. You're the you're the person to to, mm -hmm. to be sought for after you're well, you're the specialist. You know. I I've just told you a few minutes ago that I'm doing really well. I've, I've this last week, you know, I got like over a thousand dollars worth of side jobs, and um, that is all stuff that people have sought me out. You know, people have tracked me down right. from a press release through my author link uh, or through uh, my Google Plus link, and uh, yeah, it's it's being recognized as an authority. And uh, you know, a platform like this to get your face in front of people, this really helps a lot. Uh, the being on um, Michael's webinars and. Uh, Damien's and some of the others. It's like, I, you know, I am the guy now. It's 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 pretty trippy. Right on, Mike. Yeah. You're somebody <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. We all are. All, all you guys. Are. Um, do you mind elaborating a bit? Because uh, that's kind of the you know. If if not, I'll go ahead and share my. Uh, uh, do you mind elaborating? Well, no, I'll, I'll go. Now, I'll go or? into. I'll go into into that. I've. Um, I had some really good early results with press releases and uh, that made me sort of the poster child 
because um, I documented what I did and I proved that uh, actually with Rebecca's um, uh, uh, affiliate press release we got like 1400 views in just a touch over two hours and that made people go nuts and I've gone back through and doing uh, the videos that show the number of um, views I've got uh, compared that to the number of uh, uh, reads you could buy on a pay-per-click ad and the numbers are just crazy uh, $20,000 worth of stuff I did one last night for um, uh, the guys that are doing oil field directory and uh, they're uh, uh, they're able to show you know ten twenty thousand dollars worth of views and the interesting thing about that is that with um, looking at the traffic estimator according to Google you cannot buy as many views as the press releases are getting and if you put all of their keywords together that they've sort of blanketed they're saying you can only get 27 clicks a day and it's like a hundred dollars a day to do that and if you bid ten dollars twenty dollars thirty dollars it doesn't get any more you can they can only provide 25 26 27 hits a day and uh, in the video I made last night, one of the things had uh, 47 views that day, which is twice as many as you could possibly buy. Right on. That's <laughs> you know that that's a really compelling argument, <laughs> you know, as, as Scott put in the uh, uh, group, uh, the press release group today. You know, if people don't watch that and they don't buy, they're crazy, <laughs> you know, because it's. Um, they're they're blanketing uh, their industry, and they're doing it with press releases. They've increased their uh, um, web traffic by uh, four hundred percent last month, and almost all of that came the last week. And that was after we'd put out the uh, press releases. Um, there. So so right now, press release is your kind of bread and butter uh, service. Pardon me? Is our press releases your bread and butter service offerings right now? Or? They have become. I'm, uh, you know, I'm offloading a lot of the website stuff to uh, some pros. Uh, it's the first time I've ever really gone to like real high quality outsourcing, and I'm I'm just moving away from it. the The press releases are having more effect for local businesses. And um, they take a whole lot less time than you know developing a website for somebody and developing the content, and getting them to sign off for it, and changing out the pictures and all of that stuff you have to do. Here, I, I you know, put up a press release. I send, is this good enough for you? And they go, run it. You know, it's, it's the fast. power of being a senior editor. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's but it's fast. It's efficient. It's quick, and develops a buttload of traffic. You know how many how many web pages have you ever got ever put up that got fourteen hundred views in a couple of hours? It's just like it doesn't happen. <laughs> right. All right. So basically, the, the premise of this hangout uh, to keep things in focus and to, you know to kind of make sure that we're all in line. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get people to share their stories on what they would do, you know, if their back was against the wall. You know, your your success during distress was just kind of what the theme of it was. So it sounds like press releases is a thing that you would recommend people start looking at or looking into if they're trying to help local businesses, or the local businesses should be looking to if they're trying to help themselves. Both, absolutely both. The uh, the ones that I've been doing have been uh, primarily uh, through. Um, my clients doing it for their clients. Okay. Uh, some of the people I've been uh, promoting just them and building their business reputation. And uh, so the guys have started a, a, a website. They've gone off in the oil and gas industry. They have uh, 
applications and they've pretty much uh, come out of obscurity in, in two weeks to being like a dominant player, at least in, as far as Google is concerned. Right, right. But they're outranking Schlumberger and uh, Oil and Gas Journal and really respected uh, So, items. Mike, would, could, you, could you elaborate a little bit on how you were able to get, because you said a lot of the people that found you were by way of, uh, you know, they, they sought you out, right? So it's basically they're seeing your work, or how, you know, how are you getting the, the clients, or how, how did you go about developing that part of it? I hired him. <laughs> but you know him, though, so it's a referral. So, I mean, that's one area. Uh, but, referrals absolutely. Refer? Referrals okay. are absolutely killer. Uh, the people that have had good results that have referred us to their, um, their friends, uh, the ones that have come on board are, are very happy with the program, and I'm looking for more referrals from them, too. Uh, is it, is it I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I... I so let me finish. But uh, I think this is something that probably, as is, is you just said a little bit ago, is going to become a real bread and butter deal. Um, the idea of doing a couple of press releases a day, ten a week, um, you can you can make some serious dosh. <laughs> what, what and you make it back too. His course has paid for itself by now, I'm sure. Yeah, what was it? What, what what were those numbers? If you don't mind me asking, like kind of like on an average basis, or uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, just to, just to set up some expectations for people listening. The, to, uh, well, what am I what am I selling PRs for? Or, uh, sure, if, if you don't mind revealing that. Yeah. No. Well, if I can speak up, just because he's doing it for my client, I have a client, and we have a fairly competitive uh, niche. It's a medical niche, and there's been players that are in this niche that dominate for certain terminology, not just for his niche, but his, which is chiropractor, but he also opened a wellness studio, and there was already an organization that was dominating that page in the Google 7-pack along with having that, that whole page because the word wellness studio is actually in their name. So Mike and I did a press release for him last month. We not only rank three spots above the Google 7 pack now, so we push the 7 pack down the page, then he dominates underneath the 7 because there's only four entries in that 7 pack because my town is small. So he dominates above their three places and below there the rest of the page and then he dominates all the way to page five. Right. Coming from out of nowhere, and not ranking for that word whatsoever. So I mean, that's the power of Mike's press release. So therefore, once I showed that to my client, guess what? He's on board, and we just started the second press release again. And when I showed that to a new client that I'm signing up here, they were so blown away. They said, "Well, we didn't expect to have that extra added expense, but we can really see where that's a value. That makes more sense than buying a buying an ad in the newspaper. So we'll buy that too." So once you get it done, then you can leverage that success to all your new clients and have them sign up. So then we basically are joint venturing now on his press release. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. And that, that PR has had like over 500 uh, views. So there's 500 people in Missoula that have you know been attracted to it. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you also keep, uh, as far as the service goes, or just for your own reference, do you also track how many of that, how many of those people turn into buyers, or are you tracking phone calls on that or anything? I am talking to my client, um, and yes, we. I basically say he normally asks them how they heard about him, especially if they're new clients. Michael, are you smoking in your house? I, don't know. <laughs> I have the window open. Don't hear the birds. Oh, no. is, that a, is that a doobie you lighting up there, brother? No, no it's a. <laughs> Just a short camel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, let's all light up, get the hookah out. <laughs> anyway, so he asked people how they've heard of him. So I do Facebook campaigns for him as well as some other online marketing. And uh, so, yeah, so he has been monitoring the increase in his business. And he's gotten definitely some hit off of this. Because the wellness studio is a sort of a separate thing from his business. So people come in asking to use the wellness studio or to sign up to, to do this functional fitness. So yeah, he's definitely got some conversion out of it. Right on. Right on. Okay, so Rebecca, as far as what you're doing, um, if you don't mind, uh, or, or should I go next, what, what do you do in, in the event of uh, you know super tough situations? You 
you have, you have no choices? Uh, Oh, well, you know, for myself, I I wish Jack was on the call, quite honestly, because Jack saved my bacon. Yeah, we'll get um, on one of these. Yeah, <laughs> he's a really busy right now. But um, I know. when I, you know, I've been online since, I've been working online since 1999, working for small startups and, you know, helping them make money online, helping them become Fortune 500 businesses. And then in 2005, I basically said, I'm unemployable. I will not work for another person. I won't go through this miserable experience again of working for somebody who's in control of my life. And when they became a Fortune 500 company, they didn't give us any stock at all. It really kind of hurt our feelings because we're the ones who created that business. The programmers and those of us who are the salespeople are the ones who helped them, you know, become famous enough or, or, or had enough money uh, and accounts that they were able to leverage this this buyout from this large corporation. So I basically said that was the end of that because it had happened to me three times by that time. and um, So I basically said I'm never going to work for another person again unless I'm the one who's making the contracts. And since that time I've walked down this road. I went through some definite trials and tribulations. I did. I lost my house, but it was right when all the economy was going cattywampus. Um, and then just as everything looked pretty bleak, I found Jack. And I found Robert, actually. I, I had found Robert's uh, course, the Street Fighter course, and I had started down that road. It was a little complicated for me because I hadn't done any offline marketing at all. So it was a little bit over my head, and then I found Jack right after. And Jack's was really nice and simple to uh, apply. Uh, the whole uh, classified ad program, I just totally took off on that. And certainly, Carla, some of the things that you said in the forum really helped me understand what to do, you know, just from the point of view of saying there's 50 states in the United States and if you only get one client in one of those 50 states to pay $150 instead of thinking I need to make a thousand dollars you know and all this money instead of thinking so big start out small and realize how many small businesses are in across the 50 states so when you chunk it out like that all of a sudden it became accessible to me right. and so I my town is too small, especially at that time. That was, what, three years ago now. So I started getting on Skype and finding my clients through Craigslist, as Jack pointed out, and getting my clients and building my client base and then building up to referrals. And so I thought everything was over. I was down and out, but I said, I am not getting a job. <laughs> I refuse. Good for you. Right on. And, <laughs> and by holding to that, the universe basically just started sending my way what I needed to make an income, you know, to make a living, pay my bills. Have right fun. On. Okay. Have fun, have flexibility. So well that's how that's that that's you know, it's very similar. I think I think a lot of us have you know, the reason why I wanted to do this call is because I've done a lot of coaching now, you know, since since doing this whole internet marketing thing, right? Uh, and everybody, everybody that I talk to, you know, obviously I, I have a little bit of a, a curse of of experience, right? Like I, I was in I was in uh, I, I was a finance manager. I was a, I was in car sales for a while, you know. And there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing more yucky feeling than selling people kind of air stuff that you may not necessarily believe in yourself. And I was selling that stuff, you know. Um, so. Uh, you know, in a in a similar vein, uh, I had also you know d during the uh, 2009 was when the economy really you know took a dive for everybody that was in the in my sector in, in my neck of the woods anyway. Um, oh, it's my phone. Oh, my phone ring. Basically, uh, what I was looking to do was you know I wanted to get into the whole online thing and you know I wanted to sell online you know the mystique the allure and all this. But it was a lot harder than you know a lot of people have made it seem. So I got into selling uh, like uh, uh, compression style clothing, like similar to Under Armour. And I had an e-commerce store, and I bought stuff wholesale, dished out a great deal of money. And the whole SEO thing was when you know that had started for me. And I met Robert on one of the forums. And, you know, hmm. Robert actually got to got to talking, and uh, you know just idea exchange. And you know, lo and behold, during the course of, of time, you know, I, I I thankfully got to watch Robert go from what the hell do I do to blowing up. Yeah. Know? And uh, you know, he introduced me to Jack actually. Um, 
but Jack simplified everything for me because you know, like you said about Robert's course, Jack Robert has the cursor knowledge. Like he knows this stuff in his own head, but I don't think he gets it out gets it out necessarily really well. He sometimes talks real, mm -hmm. real over my head. Sometimes, sometimes just for me. He's, I'm like, a, he's a really intelligent guy, man. Yeah, yeah, but he know he knows it. He just you know, just like you know, the, the, the cursor knowledge, right? Uh, Jack dumbed it down tremendously, you know, which I was really grateful for, and he he taught me that I could I could offer the simple you know the simple service uh, to an offline business but the the nexus the thing that I already had naturally was the the fact that I could go out and talk to people you know I didn't mind jumping up a conversation I could you know go out and talk to the park bench you know I'd be fine uh, but not everybody had that skill set and when I started getting into the whole teaching others how to do it you know I got people approaching me for, for, for coaching and stuff like that I you know, I would tell people just go out and you know talk to people, and that was, you know, unbeknownst to me, was the biggest hurdle, the biggest challenge for most people. Although I suspect it's the easiest way to get clients is to just go out and, as Jack says, right, start conversations. It's not something that's readily something people are eager to do, you know, to take part in. So after coaching people one after the other, the same problem kept arising. You know, I realized all of these people just wanted a way to anonymously get clients. They wanted to put out a buy button. And just your clients that way. And yeah, they want the they want the easy problem. button. Yeah, everybody wants the easy button, and, and and unfortunately, just doesn't happen that way. And although you should have all of those pieces, the the collateral in place to kind of have that sort of mock up in place, like you would in IKEA, it's not realistic. So what I did was, you know, during you know, kind of after you know, I had come out with a few courses. I, what I did was. I started exploring the whole internet marketing anonymous thing again to see if that was there and to see if there was any possibility of that. And I discovered, you know, I re rediscovered, I want to say Fiverr. Rediscovered, yeah. Rediscovered. Oh, Fiverr. yeah, Fiverr. I, I was using Love Fiverr it. for uh, um, just outsourcing stuff, like micro, you know, micro outsourcing stuff, you know. And, I, you know, I would buy, you know, logos or, you know, characters. I would buy drawings and doodles and stuff like that. And... One of these people that I had been going to offered to get me, you know, traffic by promoting my link to his social media following, and he had all these little proof shots, which I thought were brilliant. But he also had a crap load of orders, which which helped, you know. So I bought one of his gigs, uh, and you know, I got traffic. Lo and behold, I did get traffic. Oh, do and, share, do share who that is. <laughs> oh, his name is yeah. His name is Jamie H. Hacker. You can find it. Look them up on Google Plus. I, I strongly recommend everybody who's wondering about this to go out and. So, long story short, I interviewed the guy uh, after discovering one pe one critical piece of of, of his. The, the reason why I wanted to interview him is because I noticed he had a hundred orders in his queue every time I went back to him. Every time I went, he had like Sweet. orders in his queue. And I said, "Wait a minute, this guy, this guy's making five hundred bucks a day." No <laughs> doubt, know? man. So. I said, and he's selling fiber gigs. I said, something's wrong here. You know, so he's always getting back to order. So I interviewed him. I wanted to know what he was doing, you know. Uh, and he had a legitimate following. You know, he spent about seven months trying to get followers onto his uh, into his social media streams, you know. And he had done it in a really, in a really, you know, really clever way. He had built it up. But he, but the, the, the most mind blowing thing about it was the guy had never been to any online forums. He'd never been to. He was just doing it. He figured this all out by, you know, by, by his own happenstance, by his own sheer blood, sweat, and tears. And I was like, man, that's admirable. You know, this is somebody at least seriously. Stuff, you know? So, I, you know, I, after interviewing him, you know, I got some ideas for myself. I said, man, you know, I can probably do something like this. You know, it's an easy button. Then I got into selling gigs on Fiverr. I thought I would build up my social media following. I got really heavily into, you know, Google Plus. Um, and uh, I set up a case study for myself. The case study was, uh, let me see if I can build up followers and offer fiber gigs to you know some a kind of a similar effect. And I gave myself 30 days to do something with this. And in that 30-day period, I was able to not only get I got uh, I went from 100 followers to in 22 days 830 followers. And these wow. are all followers. Yeah. Sweet. I'm now, oh, yeah, I'm now at about I'm now at about 2,000 or so. Um, and after that initial 730 people that I had added, I didn't do any more work. These are just people finding me, uh, and I would, you know, just basically follow a really easy little, little. That wasn't the coolest part about this thing. The coolest 
part about it was that I also discovered that Fiverr, through, through Fiverr, I was able to get uh, about two thousand dollars. I made about twenty one hundred dollars in twenty two days. So yeah, I'm looking at your I'm looking at your little deal here. I'm what, looking at your website right that? now. Oh, oh hold on. Uh, well, before you do that, <laughs> this is not a sales pitch at all. Don't you know? If you, if you want to, that's fine. But this is this is more to. T I'm giving you guys some steps and some things to do. Um, the reason why to consider Fiverr, if nothing else. Oh, I've been considering Fiverr. How much do they take off the top? Okay, I'm going to give you a, there's one way to look at it. They take a dollar oh, or okay. they pay you 80% ah, commission. Okay, that's not bad. What other, yeah, what other affiliate joint venture type thing on the internet does that? No, no, that's really good actually. That's, it's, that's quite it's, good. It's international, it's global traffic. It's uh -huh. all, all of it is buyer traffic, okay? Um, they the, the sales page is half done for you. You're allowed to have 20 gigs on Fiverr, 20 jobs, right? And if you're smart about how to leverage this damn thing, you know, if one person bought each of one of, one of your jobs, mm -hmm. that's a hundred dollars a day. Not to mention your upsells that connect all together. Not to mention your upsells that yeah. connect all together. <laughs> I Not use Fiverr that. every day, man. I've been I've been talk, thinking about creating gigs for myself because I me, can scrape traffic. Tell you, and let, let me tell you, as far as magnetic marketing goes, nothing stronger. Think about all these elements. I'm going to give them to you, okay? We just talked about social social, social proof. They have the thumbs taking up, notes. thumbs down. I'm taking feature, notes. Right? Okay? <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down. You know? I mean, what is that? You know? They, they give you the social proof right there. You know, they have a gallery for you. They have a sales video for you. They have SEO tag metadata for you. It, they, some of that stuff shows up on Google searches if you do it right. You know, um, this the, the the website, the portal itself buys traffic. They buy pay per click and you know pay per view traffic. They do retargeting. Um, that's all through Fiverr itself without doing anything. What other platform does that? You go to eBay, you got to pay on the way in, on the way out. Craigslist, it's only supposed to be local, so if you're doing anything else you're doing, you're going mm -hmm. against the terms of service. You know, you're buying, you know, you're doing black hat stuff. Uh, it, I don't know. I, I mean, I just love it. So I recommend anybody and everybody who's looking to do something to start considering Fiverr for, you know, whatever it is. That so I was thinking, is, so what works the best? I was going to do e-covers and classified ads, and I can do scrapes too. So what do you find is working? What I saw, what I, and, and again, it's another one of those I fell into sort of things, was I was just selling how-to advice. <laughs> all Seriously? I was, yeah, all I did was sell, essentially, the way to look at it, all I sold was... Mini, I'm looking you up, man. What's your handle on Fiverr? I'm looking you up. Life. Look up Fiverr.com forward slash focused life. And uh, you wouldn't, you'd be surprised who's trolling, so who's looking through that stuff. I got orders from Perry Marshall. Perry Marshall got me to review one of his uh, next upcoming uh, launches that he's coming out with. Seriously? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And I got, you know, I, I, I talked to a few of the gurus about it, and they're like, man, that's smart. So I used that on a sales page for something else. I was like, look who bought it. You know, you can use that stuff for testimonial base, you know, for testimonial fodder. Um, I was able to leverage that platform to get uh, in front of uh, an MLM company owner contacted me to train their sales staff. They're like, can you just teach us some of this crap that you do and the offer on one of your fiber games? You just, I don't want to buy all of these things. Can I just hire you to teach my whatever? I had three mentorships done from fiber people who bought my gigs who wanted to know more and ask me to coach them. Uh, I was like, man, uh, fiber is a monster. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing. And then to top it all off, um, some ninja things about it that I discovered that a lot of people don't realize is that those proof shots do you know as long as you fill up your fiber gigs as long as you have more than you know, three um, you're able to do some things on that site that that will help you propel you in whatever it is I think fiber is the kindergarten platform for learning how to run a business a real big business in all hmm. yeah um, because you have all the elements on a micro kind of plane on a micro platform um, I was able to learn reputation management through fiber how well, during the course of me making my case study and my and my course, I got nine negative reviews 
And Ow. I was able to get them removed and or reversed using some psychology and some, you know, I understood that, you know, once you understand the culture of whatever it is that you're trying to do, I think you can just do wonders. And it gave me everything I need to get my knuckles dirty and, and, and just get into it. So Fiverr will actually reverse it if the person writes back or the person themselves can log in and rechange that or... Oh, there's a few things you can do. So if you want to reverse a uh, negative review, you can't just like go to Fiverr and be like, "Hey, you know, get this thing removed." You could if they if there's no, you know, if it's not founded, you know. But generally speaking, what you want to do is take some active steps to correct this. So let's look at this. I'm going to show you on a small level and how you can apply this on a big level if you if you take this into your offline marketing business, which is I know both of you are heavily into. So. I got a negative review from somebody who didn't get the results that he wanted from what I showed him how to do. Uh. And he gave me a negative review because he was just pissed. He, he, you know, uh, I think the thing was uh, getting Twitter traffic or something like that. And what he was doing was, you know, I, I clearly told him not to spam his, like an affiliate link. You know, you do things a certain way. He kind of wanted to short, shortcut it. And he was like, oh, you know, I, I went to Twitter and I was doing this and I got, you know, I got my account was banned, you know, <laughs> and I and I said, well, did you, you know, I asked, I said, so what did you do, did you do this, this, and that, and he was like, well, yeah, but, you know, I don't think that technique works, I said, well, I apologize, but just so you know, your negative review and the fact that you didn't want to follow orders shouldn't have negatively, negatively impacted me, you know, what you did, I, I basically made him feel bad about giving me a negative review, and I, you know. Yeah, no doubt. Said, and, you know, we went back and forth a little bit on a, in, in, a, in an email. It wasn't, you know, I'm talking about a day here, less than a day. Uh, and so to entice him to give me a positive feedback, I offered to give him a freebie if he would first reverse this. So your other gigs can be used as leverage in and of itself. You have a lot of gigs, man. How many do you have on here? Like 20? Uh, I don't know, maxed, but I also... maxed them out? The, I don't know, but what I what I started doing with it was uh, I started taking gigs and using them as secret gigs. And, I, and what I did further, Rebecca, what I'm trying to tell you guys is some of the other things that I did are obvious. They're not obvious things to me. I built a list of 220 people before they opted into my list using Fiverr. Paid buyers list. Where'd you do that? Um... How did I do that? What do you ask me? Secret sauce. What's the secret sauce? Oh, no. I, I, what you do is I use a technique from uh, the Warrior Forum, uh, uh -huh. which is the uh, a Warrior Forum. You could buy uh, the War Room membership, right? Uh -huh. 37 bucks or something like that. And the, the, the thing about the War Room is that, you, you know, you can't force people to opt in, but you can incentivize them to opt in. So what I was doing with my Fiverr gigs on the Show You How page was I started giving them whatever it is that they bought that are deliverable, but on below it, hey, for four more secret gigs, for some secret gigs, you know, opt in here. For some gigs I don't offer on Fiverr. Jeez. Nice. So how long does it take for you? Uh, most of these things are prepared content, right? So you just send them a PDF, or how many of them do you actually have to spend time doing? It takes me 20 minutes to make one of those things, and then it's done. It's done. One and done. One and done. <laughs> so if you had, like, 100 people order something, uh, it would be, can you outsource that? I guess you could, but there's no need to. It only takes you to, you know, Two minutes to deliver it, you know. Uh, I, on average, I would get anybody for, to. Uh, uh, I was I was at least getting at least two orders out of every one person at the very least. A lot of people ordered like you know all of my gigs. Uh -huh. uh, uh, other people doing you know just a few that, that they needed or whatever, but they wanted some consulting, you know. Um, but yeah, it didn't take very long. It doesn't. I mean, it didn't. It's not something that takes very long to do. And as long as the marketing collateral is all set up, the setup is what takes the longest. So I was trying to automate something that took me, you know, three minutes to, to deliver. Um, and, you know, yeah. And then what I was doing in order to make sure that I was ordering, uh, delivering quickly was whenever I would get an order so that I'm not sitting in front of the computer all day, uh, I set up an if then, you know, if this and that sort of thing to notify me that I got an order so I could turn around and just deliver it, you know. 
Sweet. So and while I, you're while you're in Tahiti, you just get a little thing on your phone, and then you push a button, and it goes. <laughs> and you know, and it's not about getting rich quick, but it is about you know paying the bills. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and getting some real, real bill-paying money, um, and finding a way, a stepping stone way to do other things because it's a really good learning platform. Is what I'm getting at. It's not. Mm -hmm. a, I don't want to say a get rich quick. You know. But there's a lot of people making a whole lot of money on Fiverr that know how to, you know, know what they're doing. Uh, one of the things to consider about Fiverr that I, that I did, again, another one of those looking at it from a different angle. From this, you know, it's like looking at a movie, right? If you're watching it from one side of the theater versus the center versus the other, you get a different perspective, right? And this was the analogy that, that I came up with that I was like, man, this is brilliant, you know, uh, or in my, in my opinion. I was watching my daughter. I was watching my daughter one day. Um, she was trying to get, I don't know, it was a toy or a bear or something, you know what I mean? And it was across the room, and she was crawling to it, and where, from her vantage point, she just saw her end goal was this thing, the bear. I want to get this thing. But to get to it, she had a, she was trying to cross in between the, the, the wheels of, uh, she had been trying to get through her stroller, and she got herself stuck and entangled in the stroller. What she didn't see, and what most of us do in our adult life, the corollary here was, she could have just gone around the stroller. She wasn't looking at it that way. She didn't huh. see going around the stroller. She just saw her end objective. It was straight ahead, so let me go through these obstacles. When most of the time, we can usually find an alternative path if we would look left or right. You know. So with Fiverr, the analogy here, and, and you can, you, you know, what I'm always trying to get people to do now is to look for the corollary. What I, what I wanted them to do was. Um, if you go to Fiverr right now, you would think that you would have to sit there and don a banana suit, you know what I mean, in order to make <laughs> things. And yeah, they'll make you a featured seller for, you know, crawling a building naked while you're singing, you know, somebody's, <laughs> you know. but that's not what you want to do, you know. And Fiverr loves those type of crazy gigs because they can feature you on their sales page. So when a newbie comes around and looks at Fiverr, like, oh, look at all these cool things people are willing to do for five bucks, you know. So it helps Fiverr not be boring, but it does not help, and it helps the people who don't know how to market themselves get exposure. <laughs> I'll write your name on my but forehead the, for five dollars. But, the, <laughs> but the, yeah, but the top sellers on Fiverr are never featured. Never. Well, you're the number two, man. I don't even. I don't even know many level two sellers. Holy cow! How do you get that? You can, little you can thing? start doing. That, that's 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 not. Uh, that that requires uh, just ordering, uh, delivering quickly, uh, and uh, being a good seller for I don't know, like six months or something like that, three months, two months. I don't know what it is. It's whatever they 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 whatever they whatever their criteria is for it. But and it's a badge a, of it's a badge of this guy gets his work done. You can trust him. You know. Uh, y yes, it is. It is. Um, but it's. I mean, you could you could do this at level one status. Everything that I just told you, because that's how I did it. I did it with not without that badge. I mean, you know, that badge is uh, it opens up some other you know some other avenues of of income that I don't necessarily care to. You know, it's not it wasn't my. Um, I don't care if they took that away from me. How's that? So Carlos, most most of your stuff is informational products that are fire and forget. There's there's you're not doing any of the, the, the labor gigs thing, that Fiverr's famous for? Yeah, the only other thing you could do that I would recommend, if you're going to do anything that requires elbow grease, is offer a, a, something that a tool can handle for you. So, uh, like the e-cover wizard. E-cover wizard, backlinking tool, uh, anything yeah, anything that can, can be automated for you that would otherwise take you time to do manually that other people can't readily do right? uh -huh. uh, is, 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 is definitely worthwhile. But you also have to try and plus it. So I always look to, you know, to, you know, I didn't have this value talk with you guys yet, but um, it's about adding value. You know, it's not just about taking something that's already out there. It's about adding your own sort of flair to it. Mm -hmm. anyway, I have this whole thing on adding value, but I, I've talked, I've, I've spoken enough. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I, I buy? Do I hit the buy button? What's the coupon? Code, man. <laughs> code. Uh, I hope that was helpful stuff. Yeah, I hope that they give you guys some ideas. I hope I gave everybody watching some ideas. Actually, yeah, actually, I the the idea of delivering your products for five bucks a pop through Fiverr, especially if it 
alerts you that it's time to deliver. That's that's pretty cute. Oh, that's part of the culture of fiber. That's actually part of that's part of how you can get a, a, and maintain a positive feedback. People, you know, you'll notice as part of the comments in most of the gigs, you know, when you deliver quickly, that they're like, man, this guy delivered real quick, or you know, that's part of their. It, it's ingrained in the in the culture of fiber. It's part of the, what they're looking for. How quick you deliver, and a lot of the thumbs yeah. down, a lot of the negative reviews relate to the fact that the seller delivered. Not, uh -huh. you know, not on time or whatever. Yeah, well, maybe your audience. next gig needs to be uh, how to successfully use Fiverr <laughs> from a newbie standpoint. <laughs> oh, they, yeah, no, no, you can't. You, Fiverr doesn't like that. I tried that type of stuff. I tried oh, how to. No. You know, Fiverr doesn't like that. Fiverr doesn't want you to teach people how to get traffic to you know Fiverr gigs, uh, how to use Fiverr correctly. <laughs> they don't want you doing any of that stuff. They have I can't people. believe that they, they let you use their name in your. URL man. I don't think that they did. I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> Ask for forgiveness later after the hundred. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I actually Jack was uh, scolding me about that, but he liked what I what I was uh, telling him about it. Um, I used I used Facebook in the URL, and I had a cease and desist within twenty four hours. I mean, they must use Google alerts to tell them I'm, when people set that shit up. <laughs> I'm more sure than not that Fiverr will be getting around to that, so I am looking at you know crossing things over. But for right now, you know. <laughs> Actually, right if, you now, just, if, you, if you took the extra R out, you'd be fine. They can't do anything. Um, a little Fiverr, late if you're for watching, that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll, I'll change it soon enough. Yeah, because Fiverr is a colloquial <laughs> Thank you for your term. Wonderful platform. Yeah, <laughs> Fiverr is just a colloquial <laughs> term. But you know, I've been looking at some different Fiverr courses. So, and yours actually has a lot more in-depth information than some of the other WSOs that I've been looking at. So. Yeah, and I, I, I've. Uh... You've come a long way, Carlos. You're the man now. It's uh, like your third product, right? Your fourth product. It is. It is. This one's uh, uh, probably not what I've before, but it's. It's. I. I I'm really, really. Uh, um, thank you, by the way, for taking notice. But I'm really in awe of you know. It, it opened. It ex expanded my my mind of the internet in general, right? Like, cause I, you know, it's all everything about you know everything about business is just there for you to harness if you just would take the time to leverage. Fiverr. A lot of the times, what people aren't doing when they say, "Ah, Fiverr is crap," you know, I don't want to just, you know, it's worse than working for third world minimum wage. <laughs> you, you know, number one, most people they can't figure out what to offer, right? So they put up one gig. That gig gets one one order a month, and they're like, "Ah, I can't make money on Fiverr," you know. Uh, or they they open it up, they get a little bit of traffic, and then they get one negative review, and they, you know, their heart's broken because they, they don't know what to do next. Um, but meanwhile, you know, I found, you know, I just, I, I, you know, I just told you guys about a guy that I found that never even heard of the Warrior Forum. You know, he never heard of, he'd never been to any of these things. He was just like, oh, what, you know, what's that? And he was like, I, I just, I have two daughters and I had to make money, so you know, I figured out how to use this, this platform called Fiverr, and you know, I was making twenty grand a month, and I was like, what? Yeah, he's Twenty grand a month on Fiverr. Now that's yep. the guy. That's I want. That's, is that the guy you interviewed? You said yes, Justin yes. Matthews. Yeah, oh, I, is that interview in your course? It is. <laughs> I'm, it I'm is. pushing the buy button. You better give me some sort of a <laughs> coupon, dude. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. It's all. I mean, I just took. I took. I, I took me about. Maybe about two months to, to put it together, but you know, in order to get that guy to tell me all the information, you gotta say he was like really, you know, close knit about sharing stuff. No with doubt, me. I, was, I don't blame him. I was him. really, really persistent about bugging him about you know getting it. You know, so you know, so here's one ninja. That's not you your mo at all, is it, Carlos? That's not your mo. You're not a stalker. You're not a stalker. Oh, I, I'm a complete stalker. You go, I'm a, I pester people and give. Yeah, I pester people to give me information. So. Yeah, I understand they punch nine one into their phones, so yeah. they have to hit it once. Oh man, I saw. I, yeah, I, I camouflage myself as a as a moving bush. As a <laughs> 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 that's right. No, I'm I'm getting that information, David. I'm gonna figure it out. You know, that's me. I'm definitely gonna find the correlation and, uh. and get the information that I want. But um, yeah, like so. One of the things you can do, if, in case you know, 
Don't get any good. Don't get any ideas here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things you can do from a from a Jedi mind control trick, you know, some one of the things that I learned from finance, it's a sales technique. People love telling you what they know, right? People love to tell you how much they know, and they want. They love to hear themselves talk like I do right now, right? <laughs> no, but in, in all honesty, generally speaking, when people get into the zone or the mode of teaching you something, they they want to maintain that kind of uh, disparity that they're a little bit, they know a little bit more than you, generally speaking. So the way you leverage that, if you're a person who wants to get as much as you can out of it, obviously is to continue asking questions. And when they try to do the little one-up thing with you, you, know, ever, you ever talk to somebody and they're like, now, do you know how I did this? They start giving you answers, right? Or they don't. They're like, I don't know. Tell me, right? So do you know how I, uh, you know how I made you know, $500 a day on Fiverr? Well, you, you did whatever. Let's say you hit the nail on the head and you had the answer or you had an answer that you were confident with. You throw that answer out as the, as the answer, as the committed answer. They're like, yeah, yeah, that's easy. You just do this. Even it can be way off. It can be not that. <laughs> the person will be so quick to correct you with the right answer that you get the information that you want. Ah, uh, clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah actually, one of the yeah. things I've found that's a really good uh, way to get that kind of information is I've gone into real estate places um, and uh, asked for an interview. And... Uh, why are you doing an interview? Well, I'm, I need to put up an article on uh, how the Dow peak has affected real estate. And they want to give you really, really good information, and they will write your story for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And job, yep. then um, the lady that I did that with, I got all the information I wanted, and I was ready to go right. And she kept me there for a half hour, giving me wow. a list of referrals, people that, oh, you need to go talk to this person. They want to do bank loans. There's somebody that wants to do webinars. And it, they could not stop dumping information. Once I, once I opened that spout, it was like, you know, I really have to go. <laughs> it's just like this. And, and people yeah. are out there saying, you can't get any business. I don't know how to get past. That's the gatekeeper. Bam. Now, the other thing that you hit on, Carlos, it was really the jewel in there was that you came up with the word leverage. And when you have these individual products uh, or individual assets, let's put them that way, um, like the press releases, uh, leveraging the press release with YouTube, levering the press release with embedding it and the the video on your websites um, and the social sharing and stuff that gets those things going. Each one of those is um, a massive um, uh, force multiplier. A video by itself is, is very powerful. A press release is very powerful. Your blog can be very powerful. You hook all three of those things together and they they just rise to the top, you know, just like, you know, cream, you know, and they, they're all coherent, they're all tied together, and so, yeah, the the leveraging of, of your existing assets is, is something I think most people miss. Oh, yeah, big time. Big time. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, lot of, a lot of people suspect that whatever it is that they know is the is the thing to, to hoard, you know, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I had to... And I had to learn that from, from Jack that that's not the way. You know, the more you share, the more they come. The more they're like, the more you're sought after. The more, you, the, more you, the more you get the, the information that you need. But you know. Well, you know, I don't know where the guys that I was talking to earlier this morning found me, but they came to me wanting to do what I wanted to do, and. You know, they said, "Well, you know, we we only want rock stars on the team, and you're the rock star." And <laughs> really, Michael, you do not look like a rock star. <laughs> Pull that doobie back out again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the uh, the thing there is that uh, if you do good work, and um, 
Yep. You're not a jerk. You know, that's uh, that's the thing is, uh, you know, there are people that do good work that just nobody wants to deal with because they're creeps. And so, you know, I try to keep it real. And, uh, you know, if I screw up, I screw up. I come back and go, well, you know, that didn't work so good. And people, I think, respect that you're willing to share with them. And the conversations I've had yeah. with people, they stop you and they go, okay, stop. I, I believe everything you say, but I know I'm not going to do that. So when can you start? Right. Well, that's the nice thing when I'm a teaching my classes. Like I just taught this class yesterday. It's sort of a secret class because the gal that I taught, she, I taught a Pinterest class at the aging, at the uh, Lifelong Learning Center, adult education. Well, she couldn't go and she really wanted to learn this class. She goes, if I can get five or six other of my business friends together, you can do it at my shop in the basement. How does that sound? I said, fine. I said, as long as you have five people that pay X amount, I said, the class is good to go. Mm -hmm. And so she got her friends together, you know, just because she wanted to take the class because she had taken another class of mine. So she knows that I bring value to the classroom. And so she did all my work for me. She did all the work. People just showed up. They gave me money. I taught a class <laughs> of stuff I already knew and had the PowerPoints for, so it wasn't a great big deal. Right. But, you know, after the class, everybody goes, wow, you're such a great teacher. Can you do this? And so now it's going to turn into this little basement place. She wants to have me come in and teach little internet marketing segments to her friends. So one one time I'll teach YouTube, another time I'll teach Pinterest again, another time I'll teach Google Plus and places. And because they're desirous to get this, but they don't want to go. It's for less money than what they're doing at the uh, Lifelong Learning Center because they obviously take a cut of my salary and I'm an employee to them. And so right. they just put their money in a jar. I walk out with the checks and they get their education. So. But it all, it all comes together because people know, like, and trust you. And especially once you've stood up in front of me, Jack's used this technique forever. Go give a talk at the Chamber of Commerce and you'll walk out with a handful of clients. You know, as soon as you put forward the fact that you're the authority and speak with the voice of authority, knowing I'm here because I know at least one fact more than you do. Right. And when that's you speak it. that's with really, that, yeah. that's it. That's all it is. Don't be all scared. I don't know anything. Yeah, you know one more thing than those people do. And as long as you teach that one thing, now they're going, I didn't know that. I did yeah. not know. That would have taken me months to find that information. If that's the only thing they learned, boom, they're happy. Right. It's just, it's worked out wonderfully. Right on. Well, I don't know how long we've been on this call here, guys, but uh, I think... <laughs> I think it's been. I think we've we've shared some good stuff. Are you uh, are you both willing to come on board again with for some more that I have uh, in mind? I, I think it's great. This is awesome. I I think people in the forum who said they were going to be on here then didn't show up, missed out. Yeah, maybe we can give them a replay. I don't know. Is that you guys are the moderators, right? I think. <laughs> is that all right to add this thing or no? Oh, we can certainly put that in the in the forum if people want to come watch us. That's that's easy. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. I, I think it might end up, if you put the link into the form and then they see what we talked about and you just thought we talked about some valuable things, maybe, you probably can't cut this section off, but uh, I, I think then it'll motivate them, hey, that's I want to be. Do. That's the idea. Is that, that's all I ever want to do with these folks, man, just get them motivated now. Because uh, it, it's, it's, you know, the, the other mentality, and this was something that I, that I was guilty of before, was I have the information, you know, the same thing I was just talking about, the hoarding of the information. Nah, I just, you know, the more power to everybody who can actually make use of this, the more actually I learn when, because somebody's going to come up with a technique that'll, you know, that'll make us all go, man, I didn't know you could do that, you know, I didn't, I didn't even think of that, you know, and that's what I like, that's what I like seeing when, when that well, sort of creativity is stirred up, you know. The well, first nine, the first nine on, yeah, it yeah. becomes a mastermind for the first nine people yes. on, they, they get to be the mastermind people for that week and everybody else gets to watch. So it motivates people to jump on and get there quick. Right. So, yeah. and then that means we can rotate who's talking each week because it's whoever gets there first. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, Sweet. guys, um, I, hope, uh, I hope I shared stuff that was worthwhile and I hope I gave information that would help you succeed if your back was against the wall. You know? I'm hitting the buy button uh, right now, Carla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, whatever. Uh, here's here's another helpful tip in social social media. If if you think social media is the way forward, uh, which I do, uh, as it's a way. As, it's a way. It's forward. a way. A a way forward. I like that, Rebecca. Yes. Oh, that's key. It's a way. It's and it's not the only. Yeah, it's it's never the only way. Uh, but if you whatever whatever platform it is, because. I only messed around with Google Plus. I wasn't doing, you know, I didn't do Facebook. You know, I, I actually did mess around with Twitter because uh, as that one show, you know, Two Broke Girls, there's that one joke. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter's, Twitter's, uh, Twitter's stupid and Instagram's for Twitter, people who can't read <laughs> or something like that. Uh, it was something to that effect. I thought Twitter was worthless at first. I didn't know. I you had no idea how to use it, you know. But I started messing with it, and it is amazing, amazingly powerful um, with, with, with regards to if you understand, again, the culture of Twitter, you know, the culture of the thing you're using. So one of the helpful things I can give people is regarding social is learn about the hashtag thing. Um, if you don't know what hashtags are, it's that number sign. Oh, I use it all the time for my clients. So one of the cool ways that I found to use it to get followers to, as an example of people to buy my course and or to buy a fiber gig, was I started hitting up people that were posting stuff like, um, I hate my job. Uh, or they would post stuff like, you know, I need money or something like that. You know? and, God, and I, pathetic. And I, no, 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 it seems pathetic. Uh, but uh, what I was, you know, if you do a search like that right now on Twitter with the little hashtag thing, or you know, I hate, you know, or I need. Oh, whatever, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. You're following people that are lamenting. You're following people that are dumb enough to, you know, not dumb enough. They're not dumb. They're desperate enough. Motivated. Motivated. enough. Motivated. Yeah. They're wanting. They're yelling at the universe and social media, the social media universe, for some answers. And you just set up an RSS feed with that thing. Uh -huh. uh, and you'll get a ton of people to respond to and engage with uh, that you can have conversations with really easily. Uh, and then, if as long as you've set up your profile correctly, you can lead them to whatever you want. You know, uh -huh. oh, you know, I, I I started posting stuff like they would say I need you know somebody would post uh, you know for, for one of these that I did for a little while for like a week I was just doing this I need I need a job right post people would post I need a job. And I was responding to those people, even though they weren't my ideal target clients. I was responding. Were you using TweetDeck? Are you no, using TweetDeck? No, I was just using Google RSS feeds and, mm -hmm. um, and Google and that, Reader. And that, yeah, and I was responding with, "You don't need a job. Um, you need money. Nobody needs a job." And they would write, you know, LOL, and they would retweet it or something like that, you know. And, but a lot of them would, I, I was using a tracking, but a lot of them would look on my profile and click on my ad because it had a call to action, you know. Right. So you can use that to, on any platform, Google Plus adopted that same sort of uh, cultural, you know, the thing with the hashtag and the ad symbols, uh, so much so that you can track what's trending on Google Plus. You can also track what's trending on Twitter, but I think Google Plus is just a smarter, more robust platform to do it. And since Google owns two of the top three spots on Alexa, Facebook being number two and or number one, depending on how you're looking at it, um, they got you know they they, they know what, they're usually smart about watching what other people are doing well and taking that over. So I think uh, for me at least it was a smart idea to get my head around Google Plus. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of it. You know, somebody said once, uh, you know, uh, Facebook's for people that you know to connect with people you know, Twitter's to connect with people you don't know, and Google Plus is a place to connect with people you want to know. <laughs> well, I, I'm almost 100% focused on Google Plus. The only I'm in LinkedIn, and I get uh, all the alerts from them. I participate in there, but uh, you know, in Facebook, the only reason I'm in those is because that's where there are various groups that I'm I'm in. The Facebook does not give me the kind of traffic. It does not give me wow. the, um, the the kind of results that I'm I'm able to get through Google Plus. See, it's, I'm just the opposite. All the clients, all my clients are on Facebook because that's where we get all our traction from. It's a small town here, so. Um, well, I think the market has a here. has a lot to do with it too. Is uh, you know, I'm in a. 
the, the, it's a rural town. We're not even like the county seat or anything like that. And if you look at the uh, unincorporated areas around it, we probably got as many people in Camarillo area as Montana has. So <laughs> our, you know, our, our, our demographics and um, the data we have to work with and the, the spread we've got is, is really a lot bigger, you know. Yeah. If, if you focus on Missoula, you're getting, you know, as, as many people as if we focus on a, a neighborhood. Exactly. So, I mean, because when I do a search of Missoulians that are on Google Plus, it's just Missoulians? very small. Uh, yeah. <laughs> people from, well, Zoo Town is our nickname, but uh, people in Missoula are more on Facebook than they are on Google Plus. And so my clients, people, their peeps are going to be found on Facebook more than they are. So yeah. that's well, yeah, right. yeah, that's why I said, you know, it's anyway, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. it's easier, it's easier, you know, there's a quote I got from Jason Flatland, I love it, right? It's easier to find, you know, one way to get, you know, a hundred ways to get one client than one way to find a hundred. So there whatever you it is that you're using, be prolific, you know, just go for it all. You know, if you can, if you can master, you know, if you can muster it and master it, go for it. You know? Uh, but definitely, you want to be putting your fishing hook where your customers are. So if, mm -hmm. if you're a Missoulian and you, you know you're on Facebook, that's that's where I'll be. I guess I find too, Google you know? Plus is still for marketers, just like Facebook early on was for marketers. I mean, I've been on Facebook for eight years, so it was all marketer people. And then my friends joined two years ago. <laughs> well, <laughs> I find Google Plus to be the same way. It's mostly marketers. Well, don't forget though. Okay, I just, let me. Oh, you know, uh, I don't want to go on. Why do you think we're using Google Plus right now? You know, this is going to be public on my channel, but well, you know, the, the, it has its own benefits. You know, it has its own um, ranking benefits. Hangouts uh, are a whole new thing. It's a monster. It's a monster. Yes. Um, this is a game changer. Hangouts. So you know, that, you know, I just did a hangout yesterday with my, you know, with one of my offline clients just to just for shits and giggles. He gave me two hundred bucks just for doing it with him because he thought it was so cool. Um, uh, you know what I, I mean. If this if this obviously takes off, what I wanted to do was just use it for leverage for the next time. You know, I didn't care. He offered me, so I was like, okay, cool, sure. Um, but think about the implications for for you know doing you know like Mike Taylor is going. You know, imagine him doing a, a holding a, you know a real estate interview series with a broker. Uh, you know, oh or, yeah. Or, like, like, like I said, I have two other people that I know here in Missoula that are one's a videographer guy, runs a video business, and the other guy uh, is uh, Montana Programmers uh, head. And we're going to get together and start talking about how we can leverage this in Missoula to start getting people aware of what power hangouts are. And then next week also I'm teaching how to do hangouts to a person who belongs to a network marketing organization because they're tired of go to webinar. So she just doesn't understand how it can work for her, and once I show her, she'll be really excited. Oh yeah! Well, this is something oh, yeah. that people can find, and you don't you get viewers without sending out a replay link. That and you can have recurring events. Which uh, you know, once people start seeing this, I suspect you know your viewership grows. You know, like like well, well, you know, I would suspect it would grow exponentially just because of the fact that you have. You know, through virtue of the fact that you're going to have new fresh content, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And people are expecting it. So it's almost like a, it's it's a it's a free platform newsletter continuity membership sort of thing built right into it. You know. Well, if you're doing anyway. network marketing and you put your phone number, you show them how to use this little uh, ping image, and they put their phone number, call such and such a thing. Then anybody who wants to buy that product when they see the replay, bada bing, bada boom, phones phones are ringing. You know, so I think oh, for yeah. network marketers, it can be a slam dunky. Oh, you know what? Let me uh, <laughs> <laughs> write down your next MLM project. <laughs> Just on that note, you know, so I was talking about. So, Carlos, do I need to buy into the twenty nine ninety five upsell here, the members area? Since you're asking me on air, of course you do. <laughs> 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 Rebecca, you know that the tremendous value yes. of our own forum is absolutely saleable. <laughs> absolutely true, and without Carlos, I wouldn't be the woman I am today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, maybe oh, not God. woman, the salesperson I am today. <laughs> Let me see here. This is what I wanted to show you. Give me two seconds, or 
maybe a little longer than two seconds. We can just figure out how to use this thing here. Click uh, on the screen. <laughs> the share screen. Yeah. Use it's your mouse. Let's to... <laughs> see your pages. Uh, well, because this is this is all I had shown my um, my uh, dog trainer uh, was this right here. Okay, can, let me know when you can see my screen. There, it's changed. Yep. Yeah. Uh, almost changed, yeah. I can see it. So that's a, you know, a squeeze page that I designed for him, right? And then this was the Hangout that we did. And I said, let's, let's keep doing this, and people will just opt in. But this was live you know, at the time, so you just give people that link, right? Um, and people opt in you know, to... to uh, Whatever it is, the lesson is, you know, and obviously we make it so that, you know, this replay they can't get access to unless they opt in, you know. Um, I thought that was brilliant. I was like, man, that's, you know, I think that's going to be a good way to get people to opt in and, you know, to build your newsletter list or whatever. Um, so for everybody watching, I hope this gives you some helpful ideas. So you've already done the Hangout, yeah. and you just send them the link to the Hangout that's on the air. Right, exactly. Okay. Well, actually, when you set up the Hangout ahead of time, you get the link that you can send out. That's yeah, how, yeah, that's exactly. how we post uh, it you have a, the forum. Yeah, and if you have a redirector link of some sort, you, know, you, could, you could duct tape that together. So I know I know you said uh, you mentioned the form, Rebecca, you know, about Jason's one. But, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, there's a makeshift version of that, too. I'm so, surprised Jason hasn't put a product out yet. So He has. He has. It's well, coming. We, we have it's, tube method, but his whole landing page thing... That's the part I'm talking because tube method belongs to Zane, but um, the whole landing part package where you get the website and the la and the redirect stuff, all that put together in one little program. That's what I'm it's, talking about. I'm pretty sure it's on. It's in the pipeline. He's, oh, he's it is. You're not supposed you know to talk what? about that stuff, Rebecca. I can't talk about that. Right? <laughs> I'll be shot. <laughs> Things are coming. Yeah, they are. <laughs> well, we have an NDA with Jason and Will, so we can't say anything. Good. <laughs> yeah, that that makes it really difficult sometimes when people ask you questions. It's going, God, you know, I really know this. I already knew this, but I, there's this NDA thing, and uh, it makes it tough. It makes yeah. it tough. Yeah. You, you, you wind up biting your tongue a lot. <laughs> Good things are always in the pipeline. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's why I prefer talking about what I'm doing rather than what other people are doing because I don't have. Yeah, any yeah, that's that was that was definitely part of the vantage point of what I uh, uh, wanted to come up here with. Yeah, definitely talk about what you guys are up to or you know, yeah, whatever you can offer that that is helpful. That's that's here and now that you're doing. Is uh, is going to be useful. <laughs> Otherwise, if we run a file of NDAs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I think we should get together every every month. That way, it's not too much and it's not too little, and everybody can have a whole month's worth of stuff that they've talked about. Yeah, as long as everybody brings you know brings you know adds value is what I, what I say. As long as you're bringing something to the table, I think it's going to be a great sort of mastermind, uh, you know, thing that we can all use uh, for our marketing collateral piece for later, for later use, for sure. Um, always, yeah. always add value and uh, always think to leveraging your output. Well, I think we have enough people in the forum that are doing things. The people that are active in the forum are the people who are doing things. And so I think people who are going to show up are the ones who are going to have stuff or have decent enough questions of how did you get to do this? How did you set up, you know, that JV zoo, for instance, you know, um, and, and have that conversation with people. I think that's, that's going to be where, it, where it's all at. I think also a lot of the stuff that we're doing right now is, um, really sort of groundbreaking the the fact that um, the hangouts are so new and that we're figuring out how to leverage all of the Google properties to our own advantage you know there's there's some there's some pretty slick um, 
tricks that you can do, everything from uh, really, really making images work for you to, uh, you know, tying all the stuff together. That's that's something that needs needs some discussion because that's what's leaving everybody in the dust. It's like uh, too much info, you know. Too much info. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think once you once you get a hook in one one aspect that you want to kind of master and just spend the time mastering it, I think it will help a, a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, guys, um, I think we're good. To, uh, to run, yeah, but uh, I hope to you know invite and see every one of you again to another one of these rounds of this you know this roundtable uh, mastermind uh, sort of thing. And uh, until then, you know, thank you for watching. Keep uh, make sure you join each of us. I think we're all on Google Plus. Um, and uh, if you have questions, feel free to shoot them in or you know, comment on the actual channel itself. Um, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you, guys. You go, brother. That's great. Thanks. I hey, look Lars. forward to the. Uh, I'll, I'll rewatch this. It'll be cool. <laughs> Thanks for having us on, Carlos. We'll you bet. You thank you. Thank you for Do being it here. again. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll, clean, I'll, I'll clean up my office next time. <laughs> <laughs> or, or do what Zane does. He just throws a, a sheet behind him on a on a hanger. Yeah, you know, you don't gotta get <laughs> fancy. You gotta, yeah, you know, just, for sure, you just it's like a string back across the room. You know, behind you, yeah. <laughs> yeah there my, you go. Get my green my, screen going. My crappy whiteboard behind me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I saw that support ticket. The guy couldn't <laughs> believe that it was just a blue blanket. He goes, no, he's doing some kind of stuff. He goes, no, if he no, wants really? a blue behind him, he puts a blue thing behind he, him. He, he, went to the, he went to the fabric store, bought some blue stuff, and threw it up across a backdrop. Done. Well, I said, I I said it was like racks or something or other. He had junk on <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It was just like a clothes rack behind him. That's all it was. <laughs> so simple. So... Well, all right, Get talk to you later. And we'll see you guys in the next hangout. Okay, okay. talk to you later. Bye. Bye now.